New Glenn is expected to be a substantial future launch vehicle and the backbone of Blue Origin's goals. For years now, the rocket has been under development as the company tries to determine exactly what they want out of the heavy lift launch vehicle. Since its original announcement, many of its core features have changed as Blue Origin shifts the goal and purpose of New Glenn. This being said, New Glenn is still expected to be one of the most powerful rockets in the industry and launch quite consistently. While progress has not been the fastest, Blue Origin is working to get the BE-4 engine ready, booster reusability planned out, and more. All of which have an impact on not only the schedule of New Glenn, but what the rocket has to offer when complete. With an estimated 45,000 kg payload capacity to low Earth orbit, and work to reuse the booster and possibly the upper stage, New Glenn is far from a simple rocket. In the last few months and even weeks, we've seen some more progress and general work on the project. Here I will go more in depth into what Blue Origin has been working on, a closer look at New Glenn, what to expect in the near future, and more. In terms of progress on New Glenn, while updates have still been limited, progress is definitely ramping up. This primarily has to do with the BE-4 engine, which this next generation launch vehicle relies on. Specifically, New Glenn's first stage will utilize seven reusable BE-4 LOX slash LNG engines generating 17,100 kn or over 3.8 million pound force of thrust at sea level. In the last couple of months, we have watched some of the development and final testing of two BE-4 flight engines. These two engines are for United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur, which is expected to lift off for the first time using these very engines not long from now. Just in the last few days, the CEO of ULA, Tori Bruno, has provided some information on the progress of these engines. On October 10th, Tori Bruno tweeted saying, Hmm, what's that? Looks like a BE-4 flight engine being uncrated at the rocket factory in Decanter. This included an image of the flight engine we had recently seen complete testing. Just a few days later on the 11th, he tweeted again pointing out, I had to step in for Standard Brian today. He was busy building rockets elsewhere in the plant. And I can neither confirm nor deny rumors that I was seen hugging this Blue Origin BE-4 flight engine in Decanter moments before. Here you could see a close-up of the finished engine with Tori right in front of it. Not to mention, just hours ago he tweeted mentioning, Hung a BE-4 flight engine on the Vulcan booster off camera last week. Thought you might find it interesting. The reason these updates are so important for New Glenn has to do with the fact that for one, ULA has priority on the BE-4, and two, the result of Vulcan's first launch will most definitely have an impact on the future of BE-4 development and progress. If the first launch goes perfectly, this will give Blue Origin a lot of confidence and some invaluable data about the BE-4 and how exactly they operate during a real launch. From here, they can work to produce as many BE-4s as possible and start improving the manufacturing and testing process. On the other hand, if something were to go wrong having to do with the flight BE-4s provided, it could be a major setback. In this case, Blue Origin would have to figure out exactly what went wrong and make sure no other BE-4 experiences a similar issue. In terms of the ULA priority I mentioned prior, in late 2014, Blue Origin signed an agreement with United Launch Alliance to co-develop the BE-4 engine and to commit to using the new engine on the Vulcan launch vehicle which would replace the Russian-made RD-180 engine. Before Blue Origin can start creating and testing its own engines for New Glenn, the company needs to produce enough for United Launch Alliance first, then for their own rocket. With Vulcan's official first launch scheduled in early 2023, it's very possible we are only a few months away from one of New Glenn's most important components being put to the test. In addition to the progress on BE-4, it looks as if Blue Origin is also in the process of figuring out exactly how they plan to land New Glenn's booster. After scrapping the rocket ship just a few months ago, they are now working on a different landing option. In reality, the company is likely working toward an approach similar to SpaceX and the Falcon 9. A large drone ship could be the future of New Glenn booster reusability and landing. Now that we know more about some of the progress and general plans on New Glenn, we can take a closer look at the launch vehicle itself and what makes it so unique. The New Glenn architecture is intended to be a high-performance space launch system designed to meet requirements for fault tolerance, safety, and reusability, all consistent with providing a reliable space transportation capability. Starting from the bottom, the New Glenn primary booster is an operationally reusable first stage with a length of 57.5 meters and a tank diameter of 7 meters. The stage consists of three sections, aft, mid, and forward. The aft module of the booster contains seven BE-4 engines with over 3.8 million pound force of thrust at sea level. The restartable BE-4 engines are intended to provide precision thrust vector control and continuous deep throttle capability to support propulsive deceleration and landing maneuvers, while featuring long design life. The 8.5 meter diameter engine skirt protects the engines from atmospheric re-entry conditions and contains six stowed landing gear. 
The mid module of the booster houses the fuel, LNG, and oxidizer, LOX, tanks. Focusing on the design, the tanks are made of orthogrid aluminum and are designed to withstand the high G loads realized during re-entry. Large aerodynamic strakes on the aft end of the tanks give the returning first stage enhanced cross range during descent and re-entry. The forward module of the booster features four actuated aerodynamic control fins for attitude control during descent. This section of the booster also provides ground umbilical connections for new Glenn and interstage housing of the two-stage vacuum-optimized BE3U engines. The forward module houses various guidance navigation and control avionics, including an autonomous flight safety system. The pneumatic pusher stage separation system, which provides positive separation before second stage ignition, is located in the forward module, all of which combines to create the first stage of New Glenn. Moving up the rocket, you then have the upper stage. While it's possible in the future Blue Origin will work to implement a reusable upper stage, a part of Project Jarvis, here I will highlight the current expendable design. In this case, the second stage is an expendable lock slash LH2 stage with dual gimbling BE3U engines with 1060 kN or 240,000 pound force of total thrust in vacuum. This stage also has a tank diameter of 7 meters and uses common tooling with the first stage to reduce recurrent cost. The length of the second stage tank is 16.1 meters and the overall length including the two high expansion ratio nozzle BE3Us is 23.4 meters. Similar to the first stage, the second stage has aft, mid, and forward sections. The aft section consists primarily of the two BE3U engines, associated load-bearing crossbar thrust structure, and tankage slash equipment for long duration operations. The reaction control system or RCS slash settling system uses triaxial thrusters distributed in four places along the thrust structure. The second stage aft section integrates with the first stage forward section and provides one of two second stage umbilical interfaces. The midsection contains all propellant tankage, including a forward LH2 tank and an aft LOX tank, separated by a common insulated bulkhead. The tank barrels are orthogrid aluminum construction, and the domes are constructed from welded aluminum. A single external insulated LH2 supply line passes around the LOX tank. The forward section consists of the LH2 tank forward skirt and a circumferential avionic shelf integrated with the forward dome. The skirt provides the primary mechanical interfaces to the payload accommodations, including a jointed interface between the composite fixed adapter and the payload fairing. In terms of booster reusability, after second stage separation, the first stage booster reorients itself to re-enter the atmosphere aft and first. Through a combination of aerodynamic and propulsive maneuvers, the stage performs a precision landing on an ocean-going platform in the Atlantic Ocean, likely a large drone ship. After recovery at sea, the booster returns to the launch site via Port Canaveral for inspection and reuse. Blue Origin wants to reuse New Glenn's booster for a minimum of 25 flights, making it competitive for a variety of launch markets. Ideally, civil, commercial, and national security customers can all find solutions in New Glenn's high-performance configuration. Blue Origin is continuing to work and make progress on New Glenn. While it hasn't been the fastest, we recently have seen engine updates increasing, which is a good sign for the rocket. In addition, the company is working on plans for booster landing, the upper stage, and more. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.